What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm pretty excited because I actually just got in a shoe early that I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but now that I have it in hand, I kind of dig it. And that shoe is the Air Jordan 1 Fearless. I had seen countless pictures of this shoe online and I never really knew how I felt about this sneaker. I was literally split on it. I know that's like an awful pun, but it's true. And if you guys know me at all, you know I'm a huge Air Jordan 1 fan, so I really wanted to like this shoe and I'd been staring at the sneaker for like a week on GOAT and I finally just decided to pull the trigger, bought the shoe, and GOAT just shifted in this morning. Well, I guess when you guys are watching this video, it's been like a day, so I've had a chance to wear this sneaker around. But I gotta say, this shoe, really surprised me and I think it's one of the better Air Jordan 1 releases of the year. Maybe not the best, but definitely one of the better releases. The Air Jordan 1 High OG Fearless releases on November 2nd for 160 bucks. And I would assume based on the hype behind this sneaker and probably the more limited nature of the shoe, this sneaker won't be that easy to get. However, when you spend a lot of money on GOAT and you justify it by having a sneaker review channel, you can get any sneaker you want. Don't have a house, but I have shoes, so obviously my priorities are in order. And if you do decide to grab this sneaker on November 2nd or before, you are definitely in for a treat, because the box is actually a little bit different than the standard Air Jordan 1 box. Obviously the first thing that you'll notice is that they've actually reversed the colors, so instead of the Nike text being in red and the rest of the box being in black, it's switched. This is the Air Jordan 1 Fearless, so maybe they were uh, trying to be fearless with this, I don't know. It it doesn't look as good as the original box, in my opinion. That said, it is different, and I like when things are different. It feels like a special edition, so I kind of dig that about it. And inside the box, you also get a couple more Easter eggs, like this paper that says, Limits are like fears, and often just illusion. And in addition to the box, you also get this black card with the Fear logo on the front, the Jumpman, Michael Jordan's signature, and that same quote on the back. So needless to say, the packaging is dope. I think they did a great job with it. It's not something I'd want to see on every Air Jordan 1, but for this particular version, it does make the sneaker feel like a special edition. The shoes do also come with a hang tag shaped like the Wings logo with the Fear logo on one side, and that same text written on the back with Michael Jordan's signature. Apparently the quote, limits like fears are often just an illusion, is actually a quote from Michael Jordan when he was giving his Hall of Fame speech in 2009, which I didn't know, but I think that's a cool little detail that they added. And that quote seems to be the all-encompassing theme behind this sneaker, and probably the reason they went with this color blocking. It obviously also is the reason they named this shoe the Air Jordan 1 Fearless, because, you know, just an illusion. And I gotta say that the Fearless inspiration is a million times better than the shipping room inspiration they had on the previous Jordan 1 release, which is one of the weakest inspirations I think I've ever heard. But actually getting into the sneaker itself, the entire upper is constructed of patent leather. And usually I'm not really a huge fan of patent leather on the upper of Air Jordan 1s, and in this case, I still don't love the material choice, but I don't hate it. The shoe definitely has a nice shine to it, and it reminds me a lot of those patent leather mids from a couple years back. The toe of the shoe seemingly comes in the Chicago colorway. You've got red around the outside of the toe and white on the vamp. As you continue up the shoe, you get to these flat black laces that come already started in the sneaker, but if you don't like these flat black laces, Jordan Brand actually gives you three other lace options to choose from, a white, a blue, and a red. I'm probably gonna keep these laces black because I think they look the best, but it's nice to know that I have options. Beneath Beneath the laces, you have a standard Air Jordan 1 nylon tongue in black, and at the top of the tongue, you have a white tag with the Nike Air branding in red. Of course, the sock liner of the shoe comes in black mesh, which you probably already guessed. And then rounding off the inside of the shoe, you actually have a white insole with that quote repeated over and over again to create sort of a linear pattern, and then the crossed out word fear printed across the midfoot. As for sizing, this is an Air Jordan 1. It fits just like every other Air Jordan 1. For me, that's true to size. For you, it might be something different. However, if you've never tried on a pair of Air Jordan ones before and this is your first pair that you're ever getting, definitely go down to your local sneaker store or get a friend who actually owns a pair of Air Jordan 1s and try the shoe on first before you buy it to make sure that you're grabbing the right size for you. Continuing back in the sneaker, you get to more of that patent leather goodness. You've got this white patent leather panel on the midfoot and a Nike swoosh that lands right in the center. And then you get to what I think is the most interesting part of the entire shoe and that's the split between the red section and the blue section. Or another way you could put it is the Chicago half of the shoe and the UNC half of the 
the shoe. The execution of this split is actually pretty solid and it doesn't seem like a hard seam at all. It's just kind of folded over on itself. And surprisingly, all the edges seem to line up almost perfectly, which is hard to do, especially on a mass produced sneaker. In my opinion, it kind of represents the transition for Michael Jordan between college and the pros, UNC and the Chicago Bulls. Hence the name Fearless, because that's one of the most life-changing decisions you can ever make. Now keep in mind, I have no idea if that's the actual inspiration behind these two colorways. Jordan Brand hasn't officially said anything about this sneaker yet, and the release date isn't for like another two weeks, so we don't know for sure yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's what it is. As you continue farther back in the shoe, you get to more of that baby blue UNC patent leather material. And of course, in place of the standard Wings logo, you've got this Jewel Wings logo that has sort of a gold sheen to it, which I actually kind of dig. And it really reminds me again of those patent leather mids from a couple years back. That's really a classic touch and one that I haven't seen in a long time and one that I'm really happy is here. Then heading around to the back of the shoe, if this is all you ever saw of the sneaker, you might have never known that this was actually a split shoe. You might just think, oh hey, that's a patent leather UNC one. I guess if you didn't know what this is, you probably don't know what patent leather UNC ones are, but it's a moot point. Moving down on the shoe, you get to this bright white midsole, and rounding off the sneaker, you get the Chicago red outsole. The Air Jordan 1 Fearless is definitely a story-driven sneaker, and that's something that I don't really mind. I don't even mind the fact that it's all patent leather. I usually don't like that, but on this shoe, it just seems to work. Like the gold toe ones, this glossy look kind of makes the shoe feel like it's mainly for special occasions, and I feel like that's sort of the idea behind the inspiration, because that line was actually given at a commemorative speech. It's just a nicely executed sneaker, and while it might not be for everyone, I think it's great for me. Actually finding something to wear with it though might be kind of a But that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on the Air Jordan 1 Fearless, and now I would love to know your thoughts on this sneaker and whether you're planning to grab a pair when they drop on November 2nd. So let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.